up everyone, in today's video we're going to be finishing up our stuff on the ATR-42 and we're going to be setting up for an ILS landing up in the Raleigh International Airport. We're going to be taking off down here from Danbury and just kind of going through all the different bits and pushing all the right buttons and all that other good stuff. Let's get started. So first things first, I'm sitting here in this cockpit, absolutely, like I said, solid plane. Now, this had a recent update that fixed some of the things I was complaining about last week, which is awesome. Uh, of course, that also means that uh, we need to double check to make sure everything else is uh, looking pretty good here as far as any trusts go. So uh, what we have now is we're going to go get ourselves set up. I'm going to float down here to my flight plan. Unfortunately, Flight Sim does not copy information into the FMS yet, unlike it does like in the uh, big old aircraft that you've probably seen in other places. So what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to go into my flight plan pitch. If you're curious how we get there, we go to menu. FMS and all we have to do is press our flight plan button and you can see my current flight plan right now is going to be taking me from DXR which is Danbury up to Bradley. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the button to the left of Bradley and I'm going to go ahead and pick the approach that I want to use. In this case I'm going to take ILS for six and then if I needed a star of course I can pick this down here and I can press the execute button. Now the interesting thing here is it defaulted to the Pena initial approach fix here which is okay but you're also going to notice we still have this big fat discontinuity sitting there so i'm going to press the clear button then i'm going to click right here on the discontinuity check it out to make sure it works press the answer button and it looks pretty good so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to go double check to see what my altitudes are it looks like my initial altitude is absolutely squat if i want to be a little silly we could come in here and uh, do one of these things like that and of course it's going to go ahead and say uh, what altitude we're supposed to hit it at and everything like that we can get into quite a bit of detail with this depending on what we're trying to do if i want to come in here and put that on there i can press x execute if i go back uh up at previous uh, we hit the return button you'll notice we now have a 5,000 foot request at uh, danbury obviously um we can't get up to 5,000 feet that quickly here in danbury but at the very least you can see exactly where that would be sitting so i'm happy with that no, i'm not gonna feel, i don't feel the need to change any of those things i'm just gonna pop up the surveillance page real quick i'm just gonna make sure that's set all correctly uh that looks good to me you'll go to the tcas page t-a-r-a -A, uh, looks pretty good t-a that's exactly the one i way i want it looks pretty good to me I'll press the escape key in my nav i've got all my frequency here of course there's a couple different frequencies we're going to be interested in you'll notice that right now this is uh, set to the automatic mode and we're on 10980 uh, the ILS approach we're going to be using today is going to be 11110 so again I can come in here and I can dial in whatever particular frequency that I need but uh, keep in mind there's another place you could put these frequencies if uh, we needed to do that as well I'm just going to press the enter key that's fine for me I'm going to go ahead and do a quick little swap a route here and again that's kind of take us off of auto mode depending on what you wanted to do the other option we have for that is if you actually come up here uh, we have a bunch of different buttons you know you've got your RMS you press RMS and go over to nav you can actually dial it in here so you actually have a choice on which mode you want and keep in mind if i wanted to i could tap the auto button again and that'll reset it to that original setting delightful let's go ahead and check a look that looks good to me navigational device i'm actually going to set this to normal and we're going to do wix and terrain that looks good to me i'm also going to set to airport mode just in case pfd um synthetic vision ah i don't really need synthetic vision for this but um we do have the option for that uh, should we need it for that particular purpose all right i'm gonna go back to the com page i'm perfectly happy with everything else let me uh, blitz through our page here real fast uh, da, 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 da. not only to decrease range i need to say yes <laughs> just kind of blasting it through a checklist obviously in the real world you want to be as careful as you can to go through each one of these items i'm just clearing it ah probably a trim issue as always it's a trim issue hey, whoop. Hey, whoop. i swear that's pac-man every single time i hear it <laughs> love that all right let's confirm that we're in takeoff mode we have the boost engine on option uh, we're going to need that because it's a very short runway for us and then all we're going to do is we're going to head up to our altitude and we're going to go ahead and dial in our first altitude here so that we have it ready to rock. Remember, we're going up to 5,000 feet here. Go ahead and I'll give it a couple wiggle waggles. And again, it's a little difficult to see. It's one of the downsides of just the uh, configuration. It is not, this does not lend itself well cockpit wise to an aircraft that is otherwise. This switch is going to be very important for us later on. And actually, while I'm at it, I'm going to go ahead and set this to 57 degrees. Uh, if you're wondering where I'm getting that number from, um, that's going to be the course of our approach down to a landing. Uh, we're not going to change that right now because obviously we're sitting here in FMS mode. We're basically reading the GMS. Oh, GMS. What's that? Uh, GPS. So we can go ahead and use that item there. Everything else at this point is uh, pretty much ready to go. I'm going to sync my heading. I'm going to go ahead and arm heading here. Uh, we're going to set that looks pretty good. That's what we want. All right, that looks pretty good. Uh, now what we're going to do is we're just going to confirm that that's set, that's set, that's set, coupled to my side, flight director is on, I'm liking the look of that. No angry warning lights, I've got no warnings, traps, the flaps are set to the correct position, a speed brake is disengaged, a condition lever, obviously uh, we would only need 100% here. If we wanted to absolutely get maximum everything, we could slap that up there. Flaps are looking good, emergency brake is looking pretty good, we actually got to release that now and get this thing rolling here. All right, uh, let's do it to it. Off we go. 
an interesting thing is uh, my former flight instructor who actually called this airport a toilet bowl. And now you're probably wondering why it's a toilet bowl. And it's, if you actually come in here, you'll realize that this is in a very, very deep valley. And it's a valley on every side of itself. So uh, as great as this airport is, it's uh, sketchy. Very, very sketchy. <laughs> you're all sitting there going, uh, did you intend to be that close when you took off? Uh, the answer is uh, no, but um, the math said that it could take off, so I went for it anyway. And you know how dangerous those things can be. All right, let's go ahead and bring up our flaps. Everything's looking lovely there. We can come out of boost. Uh, we don't need it anymore. That looks good to me. Red 64, contact New York departure on 126.4. They're going to call us in. I love how it just, <laughs> it just dies. Love it. All right, we'll go ahead and uh, give them a quick little call there and let them know that we did indeed hear them. And then we're just going to start... Of course, uh, from this point on, we're on our own, but that's a different issue. All right, so we're just going to enjoy my nice leisurely turn here. And we're basically going to get ready for landing. <laughs> just kind of one of those things. Uh, one of the things I appreciate about flights like this is they're so incredibly direct. It's just a matter of just kind of going sort of a thing. My pitch hold's looking pretty good. And we're going a little slow here, but I don't need to do anything too aggressive. Our approach is not going to take us very long to set up for. And then uh, there's a couple little options we're going to have to get all ready to go as we're making our way over to that particular point. Of the fact that it was on pitch hold and I had it up at like 13, 14 degrees there, a little steep, but that's all right. There we go. We're going to go ahead and level ourselves off. Listen to some Pac-Man. Yeah, that's looking pretty good. We got some real turbulence today. We have real world weather. Um, this is the only time of the year that where I live up here in lovely Connecticut that it is possible to see no clouds in the sky. Uh, the rest of the year, it's always cloudy. It's uh, sometimes very, very icy. It's always windy. And it's just, you know, kind of the nature of the beast, so to speak here. Whoa! Um, I do have uh, regular turbulence, but um, I hope the turbulence is not that bad. We're going to flip this sucker on. I double check to make sure we're in uh, lateral navigation mode, which we is. Uh, we're going to go ahead and pitch the nose down a little bit. We don't need to be nearly that high here. Are we on pitch hold? Yeah, we're on pitch hold right now. That's actually really good speed. 60 is fine. All right, let's go ahead now. Make sure everything's all nice and cleaned up here. I'm going to go reach my head above my head. Landing lights were already off, so I'm not going to worry about that. The bacon light was already on. All those settings are set correctly, and we're coming up on our targeting altitude. <laughs> you know, because we have weapons on this thing. Uh, timer's looking pretty good, and uh, now it's time to start getting ready for our lovely landing here. Now, the reason I really love the ILS for Romeo 6 is on... Other than the fact it's uh, completely lined up with us, it's uh, one of those ones that I've done in the real world a few times now. So I've gotten to experience all the pleasure that there is on this particular approach here. So keep in mind, we're going to be coming down here from the bottom left corner of this particular chart. We're going to be hitting this point right here. This is called Stain. Uh, well, actually, this is uh, for Brad, BDR. Wouldn't it be nice if I were in the wrong airport? Yeah, it would be. So we're going to be arriving here at Penna. I knew something went wrong. And uh, we're basically going to be hitting that target at a lovely between seven and 3,000 feet. We'll be hitting at 3,000 feet. Our frequency today is going to be, I believe it is 1 with 1.1. We already located that. 58 degrees in the approach course. So we're going to have to adjust that. We have 9,500 feet, plenty. Uh, it looks like our angle of approach here is actually going to be three degrees today. Uh, that's actually pretty good for us. That's going to make it pretty easy. Our approach speed is going to be 120. Uh, the reason we're going to be taking an approach speed of that high is on account of the fact that that's going to give us the most options as far as if we have to stay out of the way of stuff behind us like big heavy jets you know we don't want to go ripping past them or anything like that all right that's looking pretty good to me i like that i'm gonna go pull that to the side so you don't have to stare at that the whole flight we have ourselves a pretty substantial crosswind uh, which you can probably notice uh, very clearly here 21 knots uh, <laughs> welcome to connecticut that's usually what it's like on the ground so this is actually very very tame as far as uh, some of the wind we have so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go ahead and order up a descent here uh, we've got plenty of airspeed here uh, we're pretty much ready to go down already which is incredible Three thousand feet is going to be selected I'm going to go ahead and uh, press the VNAV button. And what it's going to do is it's going to arm our altitude capture here. I'm actually going to pull the power back just a little bit. We'll go snap this up to max continuous. And I don't need boost. Notice the RPM goes up before everything else does. There we go. Notice as I reduce the power here that uh, we start a very, very gentle descent. Remember, we're looking for about 3,000 feet uh, when we get to Penna. Uh, Penna is about 26 nautical miles away for us, so that's a pretty hefty ride. So I'm not too, too worried about that aspect of it. I'm actually, I don't need to listen to that whole flight. I'm going to reduce the RPM a little bit. There we go. Nice. 
So now what we need to do is we need to make sure our navigation radios are all set up correctly so uh, we can set things up. So what I'm going to do here is, uh, like I said, a couple of ways we can do that. Uh, we can come over here. We can go press the nav button. And then we can manually dial it. Notice it's automatically forgot my lovely frequency. The other option we have is we can pop down here where it says RMS. And we can go ahead and dial it in manually by clicking the nav button and just typing it in. Let's go 101.1 is the freak. You can see that's going to automatically override whatever setting we have there. We're not going to pick anything up on it just yet because we're a little out of range. Uh, if we did have a little bit closer, we could probably pick it up on the, like, the DME and stuff like that. But I don't expect that, so I'm not worried about it too, too much. That right, looks pretty good. Getting bounced around. Uh, that's a part of the fun, as we all like to say. And now we're basically going to ride this down until we get ourselves down to that 3,000 feet. Remember, we have a couple different altitude constraints here. Uh, we have the 3,000 feet that was dictated by, if I go back to our flight plan, you can see that's right there. That's a 3,000 at. And we also can see that we're descending towards that, hopefully trying to hit it when we get there. Now, one of the things you'll notice is if I increase power a little bit, what's going to happen is my descent rate is going to decrease because we're going to be going faster towards the particular destination that I'm heading towards at this particular time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fast forward to get, we get to Penna. All right, we've got about eight nautical miles to go. It's a good time to go ahead and set up our minimums here. So what we're going to do is we're going to come down here. I'm going to hide this real fast. And we have two different types of minimums. We have decision height. Think of this like ASL. And then we have minimum decision altitude. A little bit of a difference between the two. So if I were to take my height here, and if I go ahead and I crank this thing, if I start wiggling this little knob, you're going to notice that a decision height is going to appear on the screen. If I click this again, that's going to be giving us our decision altitude, which is going to be a little bit different between the two. Obviously, you need to pick the appropriate one based on what type of approach you're using. Uh, we get a 200 feet here, so uh, we got that set here. That's our decision altitude and get that all set. But I actually prefer to use a height here uh, just because it makes a little bit more sense for this particular application. Now we're going to go click on that button again. You just have to click on it once to switch its mode here. And you can set whatever decision height uh, that you particularly need here. Just a little bit. So we have plenty of opportunity to do that. And you'll actually see this appear on the little altitude tape on our left-hand side as well. All right, we're getting very close to Penna here, and uh, this is where the fun part begins. Uh, looks good to me. 200 decision height, that's what I'd like. And uh, that's where things are going to get interesting for us, because uh, we're going to have to do a lot of stuff back to back. Now, I've got about four nautical miles to go, so I like to start slowing down to my approach three nautical miles out, because that's going to give me plenty of time to get down to about 120 knots by the time I have to actually cross the magical line there. So you can see I've got about, eh, about three nautical miles. I'm just going to gently pull back power. And you're going to hear the engine start to spool down. Now, the RPM is going to stay up pretty high, but you're going to watch my airspeed drop very quickly. It takes very, very little to get this thing to slow down, which is something I do like about it. All right, we're going to drop down to about 180. We don't need to get going too slow here. We just need to reduce a little bit of power so that we're ready at about 120 when we cross Penna. So one of the things we want to do now is we want to switch the navigational source over to the actual ILS approach. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to do a heading sync like that. I'm going to come up to the heading button and press that so I lock onto my current heading. And then what I'm going to do is switch my navigational modes by rotating this one to the right. And then I'm going to come back and press the navigational hold button. So what I've just done is I've actually locked on to the localizer. Keep in mind, I'm not on approach mode, but what you'll notice is a bunch of things have appeared. First of all, I can see the localizer, so that's good. And I can also see the glide slope start to appear on the screen here. Um, we're getting pretty darn close to hitting that point. Uh, generally, is, I like to always put down my gear once I cross this first dot. Uh, because this is such a tight approach for us, I'm going to hold off on that. We've got to get to 158 anyway. All right, going to start slowing down a little more here. Kind of get us down to that gear dropping position. Had a wet, massive whack of turbulence there. Welcome to every day in Connecticut, by the way. All right, that looks pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and arm the approach by pressing the APP button. And what's going to happen now is that when we cross this magical line, we're going to go ahead and actually begin the approach process. Uh, for me, I'm going to go ahead and uh, double check to make sure this is uh, it's ready to go. We're going to need maximum power in the event that I need to go around. We're good to put down a notch of flaps, and we're good to put down a notch of gear. So I'm going to go ahead and engage that right away. We have about 22 seconds to get to our point. And remember, we want to be doing about 120 knots. There is the top of the glide slope. We're going to go ahead and slap in that extra notch of flaps, and we're going to start appreciating our nice, smooth descent down to the ground here. So a bunch of things we want to do is we want to constantly be monitoring the approach here. Our decision height was set. We are right on glide slope right now. We are in localizer captured. Our glide slope is green, which means that is captured as well. And what we're going to do is we're going to hover right around 120 knots here. So we give it just a little bit of power. It does not take much. There we go, about right there. Now we passed Janet, that's about 2,400 feet. We're a little high, but uh, by a little high, I mean a little teeny tiny bit high. We're not that bad at all. There we go, tap the gas just a little bit. Uh, this one's kind of tricky to get the exact right amount of power in. 
That looks good right about. I'll give it a couple more taps real quick. That looks pretty good. We're getting a little slow. Hovering right around that V2 point. A little bit below glide slope. Uh, we got 2180 on our radar altimeter. Everything's working fine. We're a little off to the left here, but again, everything's holding nice and tight. I can look out the window and things look basically what they're supposed to be looking. Holding off on that last notch of flaps here until we get a little bit closer. Enjoying the turbulence. <laughs> you have to enjoy the turbulence. Uh, one thing I do like here is uh, we do have our yaw damper engaged. Uh, that's a great tool. It's uh, going to make it a little bit more comfortable for us on the approach. Uh, one thing we can do, of course, is if we want to have a specific speed here, we can actually dial in that specific speed depending on what it is we're trying to achieve. There we go. Make sure you hit the sell button before you do that. So if I wanted to hold 120, I could actually put the little speed bug right on 120 to make it a little bit easier to actually capture there. And again, uh, we're appreciating our lovely amounts of turbulence here, trying to keep things front for us. Our final approach speed today is going to end up being about 109 knots. We're just a little quick. Now, if you're wondering, like I said a few times, why am I still caring about that specific speed? Well, believe it or not, if you were to open up a, a constant descent rate table, and we'll talk about this later, our particular approach here is going to be 3 degrees, and at 120, if we actually assign these, this gives me about 637 feet per minute. Now, what you're saying, well, why don't you do 109? Well, that would require some interpolation on our part in order to get that number accurately. So the nice thing about picking one of these nice slots is it makes it much quicker and easier for us to actually make sure we're on target for that. All right, let's go pull that out of the way. We're going to go uh, dirty up the rest of the plane here, make sure everything's set correctly. Our RPM is set good. Our, our speed is just a little high, but it is a little bumpy today, so that does not surprise. We are slightly below glide slope. We're minimally to the left of the glide slope. Again, keep in mind, we got a bit of a crosswind coming from the northwest there. So uh, we'll appreciate that on our way down, about 120. Looking out the window here, everything's looking pretty darn good. A little slow, but that's okay. We need to start descending to our final approach speed anyway. All right, I'm going to pick my speed selector. And we're going to go down to 109 here. 109, that looks good to me. Pull back the throttle just a teeny tiny bit. Looking at our altitude, wheel back. We're at 920. Getting very close here. This is the fun part. This is where you hit the bumps. All right, air speed's almost perfect. It's going to give just a tap of gas here. Uh, keep in mind, I'm going to go ahead and move my head down a little. Actually, I'll do you even bigger favor. Let me help you out. How's that? That should make it a little bit easier to see what's going on here. So that way we can enjoy our flight and enjoy our flight. But again, you can see we're just a little tiny bit fast. Now, if somebody had a slightly, I mean, you know, I appreciate the new glass cockpit and everything, but do you think you could have gone with a slightly smaller version? <laughs> so let me go ahead and uh, slow down just a bit here. Again, we don't want to go too quick. We are below glide slope right now because um, for whatever reason, the autopilot is really struggling with this. It happens. And then the real autopilots, a lot of times what will happen is it'll pop off. You hear a boop, and all of a sudden now you're flying the plane instead of the airplane. <laughs> instead of uh, the air autopilot flying the plane. We're more than close enough here, and uh, one thing that I noticed is uh, this thing's getting a little low. I'm actually going to override, and I'm going to take control of the aircraft. There we go, much better. All right, much better. All right, now we're back under control. Speed's back where it needs to be. Now, in the real world, if you had let it get that far underneath the glide slope, uh, yeah, you'd be uh, filling out one of the NASA forums. Can't blame everything on the autopilot. Approaching decision height. Isn't that awesome? I don't know why I just find I get such a kick out of that. Woo! This turbulence is fun. Decision height. <laughs> Isn't that awesome? <laughs> I love that. Uh, landing. Wow, this is fun turbulence. 30, 30, 20, 10. Oh, that was a little rough. I just forget how short this thing is. And we're here. So that concludes our little series on the ATR. Oh, this is a neat little piece of plane. I think it's kind of cool. It's a lot of little bells and whistles that make it a little bit more interesting. And it's an odd blend of airliner and like you know, kind of tiny turboprop. Ooh, sorry. Sorry, people in the back. Sorry, sorry. But as you can see, uh, making an approach is all about setting it up, following through with it, and uh, being willing to override the control of the aircraft when things don't look right. Enjoy.